If you're a homeowner, your mortgage payment is probably your largest monthly expense. So it's wise to stay alert for opportunities to refinance your home loan for a lower interest rate and cut your payment. Plus, your financial circumstances and needs today may differ from when you originally got your mortgage. In this podcast, I'll cover what a mortgage refinance is, common reasons for doing one, and tips to know when it's right for your situation. Hey friends, welcome back. I'm Laura Adams, an award-winning author, money speaker, founder of the Money Stack newsletter, and host of Money Girl with over 43 million downloads. I also work as an on-camera financial spokesperson and partner with select brands for PR and content marketing. As always, you can learn more and email me at lauradadams.com. And if you're getting value from the free Money Girl content we love creating, consider submitting a five-star rating or review of the podcast. We would really appreciate that. And if you have a comment or a money question, please leave it on our voicemail line. That's 302-364-0308. I'd love to answer your question on a future show. All right, so let's talk about what a mortgage refinance is. It's simply when you get a new mortgage that pays off and replaces your existing one. The new loan can be with your same institution or it could be with a different lender. I'm gonna go through several types of refinancing options that homeowners can use to accomplish various financial goals. The first one is called a rate and term refinance. This is the most popular refinancing option and it allows you to get a loan with a lower interest rate, perhaps a different repayment term or both. For example, if you've got a fixed rate mortgage at 7.5%, you could refinance with a 30-year mortgage at 6%. That would reduce your monthly payments and the amount of interest you pay over the life of the loan. Another reason to refinance is when you have a mortgage co-borrower, like an ex-spouse that you want to remove from a home loan instead of selling the property. Another type is called a cash out refinance. This is a strategy where you get a loan that's larger than your existing mortgage, so you walk away from the closing with cash. Suppose your home's market value is $400,000 and your mortgage balance is $200,000. Let's say you need $25,000 to pay for college or to start a business. You could do a cash out refinance that nets you $225,000. So after paying off the original mortgage of $200,000 plus some additional fees in there, you would have $25,000 left to spend any way you like. And another type is called a cash-in refinance. This requires you to pay cash at the closing to pay off your existing mortgage balance. Now, it's necessary when you don't have enough equity to qualify for a refinance, or let's say you owe more than your home is worth. You might want to do a cash-in refinance when having a lower loan-to-value ratio would qualify you for a lower mortgage rate or even allow you to get rid of private mortgage insurance or PMI. And I'll talk more uh, a little bit more about that in a moment. So those are the basic types of options and, you know, reasons that you might want to do a mortgage refinance. But a really big question, especially for the rate and term, is when is the right time for a mortgage refinance? So the right time depends on the terms of your current home loan, the interest rate environment, you know, are rates trending up or down? your goals, and how long you plan to own your property. If you bought a home over the past couple of years, your interest rate was probably higher than you wanted to pay. Interest rates reached a 23-year peak of 7.79% for a 30-year fixed rate mortgage in October 2023. While we think of that as being high, it's actually pretty tame compared to interest rates that skyrocketed to 18.63% in October 1981. But when mortgage rates drop, mortgage refinance lenders want to give you a good deal to get your business. And compared to last year, this time, refinance applications have increased 118%. So let's go through five tips or situations when doing a rate and term refinance may be right for you. So the first reason is you have enough home equity. So when shopping for a mortgage refinance, an important issue that could make or break the deal is how much home equity you have. 
Equity is the difference between what your property is worth and how much you owe. So for instance, let's say your home is worth 400000 and you owe 300000 In that case, you've got $100,000 of equity, and that comes out to 25%. So taking 100000 of equity divided by your home's uh, market value of 400000 comes out to 0.25 or 25%. The best situation for a refinance is to have at least 20% equity. You can still find lenders who will work with you if you have less. However, unless your credit is excellent, you'll typically pay a higher interest rate when you've got low equity. In addition, if you don't have at least 20% equity, you're on the hook for private mortgage insurance, which I previously mentioned. Adding PMI to your new loan could cut your savings and give you a much longer break-even point, which we'll review more about in a moment. Now, if you're unsure how much home equity you have, don't let that stop you from inquiring about your options to refinance and save money. Housing prices have risen significantly since the pandemic in most parts of the country, so you could have more equity in your home than you think. Another reason to do a refinance is you can get a lower interest rate. This is the primary reason. If you're paying at least 0.75% more than the going mortgage rate, which is about 6.49% as of late August, as I'm recording right now in 2024, you're in a great position to consider refinancing. Suppose you have a $300,000 fixed rate mortgage at 7.79% and you can refinance to a 6.49% loan, well, that rate reduction could cut your monthly payment by about $260. That would save you nearly $95,000 in interest over 30 years. But you have to do your homework and understand what a refinance will cost you. The total fees could range anywhere from 2% up to 6% of the loan amount, depending on where you live and depending on your lender. Fees go to professionals who provide various services for a refinance, like the lender or mortgage broker, property appraiser, closing agent or attorney, surveyor, inspector, local recording office, and maybe others, depending on where you live. It's rare, but you could also have to pay a prepayment penalty to pay off your current mortgage early. If you can't afford to pay refinancing closing costs up front, you may be able to roll them into the new loan, but that obviously increases the amount that you have to borrow and may also increase your interest rate. So always ask potential lenders for a side-by-side comparison of the cost and terms for different loan options so you can carefully evaluate them. I recommend shopping for a refinance with the lender who holds your current mortgage, plus one or two different companies. You want to let your mortgage company know that you're shopping for the best offer. They may be willing to waive specific fees if some of the required paperwork, like the title search, survey, or appraisal, is still current for your home. Just be sure they don't raise your interest rate in exchange for cutting your upfront fees. Third situation when a refinance may be right is you plan to stay in your home for several years. Once you know what a refinance will cost, you want to ensure that you're going to own your home long enough to cover that expense. Otherwise, you will lose money on the deal. It generally takes at least three years to save enough money on a refinance to make it worthwhile. However, you should do the math to know exactly how long it would take you to break even. The formula entails adding up your total closing costs and then dividing that number by your monthly savings. So your refinance break-even point equals total monthly costs divided by monthly savings. So here's an example. Let's say your closing costs would be $12,000 and you'd save $260 a month on your payment by refinancing. In that case, it would take you 46 months or just over three and a half years to recoup the cost. So again, the formula here would be $12,000 in total cost divided by $260 in your monthly savings. That equals 46 months or 3.8 years to break even. 
So if you're going to stay in your home for at least that long, you will pass the break-even point and come out ahead. Note that you can refinance your mortgage as often as you like. But if you're not confident that you're going to own your home past the break-even point, refinancing doesn't make financial sense and you should keep your current mortgage unless you have another reason to refinance. And the fourth way to know if refinancing might be right for you is you have an adjustable rate mortgage or ARM. Buying a home with an adjustable rate mortgage has a lot of advantages like a lower interest rate, lower monthly payments, and perhaps even qualifying for a larger loan compared to getting a fixed rate mortgage. With an ARM, when interest rates go down, you benefit because monthly payments get smaller. But if interest rates rise, you can feel panicked as your ARM payments increase. While there are caps on annual ARM increases, your mortgage rate could double within just a few years if interest rates have a significant spike. Instead of worrying about how high your adjustable rate payment could go, consider refinancing to a fixed rate loan to lock in a reasonable rate that will never change. No matter what happens in the economy, you'll have a monthly payment that's the same with a fixed rate mortgage. A stable mortgage payment can really make it easier to manage your expenses and stick to a spending plan. And the last reason why a refinance may make sense is you have good credit and income. Similar to when you got your original mortgage, a refinance lender will evaluate your income and employment history your credit scores, and your assets and liabilities. The higher your income and credit scores and the lower your debts, the lower your interest rate will be for a refinance. So if you're unemployed or your credit took a dive due to a hardship, you want to wait until your overall financial situation improves before making a mortgage refinance application. Good credit can save you thousands on your new mortgage. So let's go through the benefits of mortgage refinancing. I think the primary benefit is saving money with a lower monthly payment. That can add up to tens of thousands of dollars over the life of your loan. You can also change a mortgage's term to shorten or lengthen it. For instance, if you have 28 years remaining on your mortgage, you can refinance to a 30-year or even a 15-year loan. But choosing a significantly shorter repayment term will increase your monthly payments. But it also dramatically decreases the amount of interest you must pay. So you've got to kind of balance what's most important for you. A cash-out refinance allows you to access your home's equity for any purpose. However, you may get a better rate using a home equity line of credit or HELOC if that's something of interest to you. Refinancing also allows you to change the owner of a mortgage, such as changing it to one person in a couple after a split or a divorce. And it's a common solution if one person wants to remain in a home or buys out a property's co-owner. Now, what are the downsides of mortgage refinancing? Well, I'd say the biggest is certainly its cost. You must pay many closing costs, which may be less than they were when you got your original mortgage, but, you know, they're still significant. As I mentioned, they could range anywhere from 2 up to 6% of the loan amount. If you refinance a mortgage for a significantly longer term, such as you've got 10 years left on the mortgage, but you extend the balance out to a new 30-year loan, you could end up paying more over the life of the loan than if you, you know, just kept your remaining 10-year mortgage. The longer your mortgage term, the more interest you pay. Another downside I mentioned is that some mortgages charge a prepayment penalty if you pay off the loan early. Most mortgages don't have this, but I recommend that you check before committing to a refinance. To sum up, if a mortgage refinance helps you save money despite its costs, it's an excellent money move. But for most homeowners who already enjoy mortgage rates lower than today's, some below 3%, Refinancing may only make sense if it's for a reason other than saving money. However, if you bought your home within the past year or two when mortgage rates were higher, refinancing is a wise strategy to consider. If you need help crunching the numbers, speak with a mortgage professional who can help you understand the costs and your break-even point for staying in the property long enough to recoup those expenses.
I hope that's been helpful if you've been wondering if a refinance is right for you. Before we go, here's a quick reminder to subscribe to The Money Stack. That's my weekly newsletter. You can get it for free when you visit lauradadams.com. It's filled with money tips, tools, news, challenges, and things I enjoy. Subscribe for free or become a paid member with access to live educational events. That's all for now. I'll talk to you soon. Until then, here's to living a richer life. Money Girl is a quick and dirty tips podcast, and I want to thank our fantastic team. Steve Rickyberg audio engineers the show. Brandon Gaitchis is our director of podcasts. Holly Hutchins is our digital operations specialist. Morgan Christensen is our advertising operations specialist. And Davina Tomlin is our marketing and publicity associate. <laughs>